those of you out there who are preparing for the uh, DA100 test, maybe take a load off on DAX if you already know you're pretty good at it and start delving deeper into Power Query. And I think our presentations today are going to help you out a little bit more with, um, if not showing you something new, at least showing you something you didn't even know existed. You know? How, many, how many times did you have to take the test? Only one. Dang. Yeah. That's like a that's like a humble brag. It's like a flex. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, luckily as a Microsoft certified trainer, I got that sweet discount too. So nice. Very nice. Well, do you cool. think, okay. oh, go ahead. No, well, do you, I was do just you think, say, cool. yeah, so do you think an experienced um, you know, Power BI developer who's maybe been working with the tool for two years, could they just come in off the street, take it cold without preparing for the test and possibly pass? They may, I'd say not some, get, they may not get as high of a score as you got, but would they pass? I'd say someone with two years of experience in a pinch could walk in off the street, but they'd be looking at a, you know, right there on the cusp of passing uh, only due to the fact that there's a lot of, a lot more tricky questions. But, you know, if you are coming in off the street, taking the uh, Excel and Power BI tests from the old era, then, you know, you might be a little thrown off by some of the uh, trickiness in the questions. Um, it's just a, uh, pretty good idea to um, prep yourself on what you don't do on a daily basis rather than relying on your knowledge from your daily activity. Well, and just like you were saying before, with like any of these Microsoft tests, especially anymore, they kind of go through these ebbs and flows where they're like, they want people to get certified. So it feels like the tests aren't that hard. And then a lot of people get certified. And so they want the test to be more, me the certification to be more meaningful. So they try to make it harder. I think we're kind of in a, one of those flows up where they wanted people into the BI community for Power BI. And now that they're past that and the product's more developed, they've got this way that they want you to do it, right? Yes. It was like when I started back in the day with Active Directory, like you could get away with a certain answer, right? Like you could probably, like you were saying with some of the Power Query stuff, you could potentially solve the problem in one of three or four ways, but there is a more Microsoft approved yes, exactly. way of doing it, right? Which you're only gonna get through studying. Yeah, I definitely agree that it's we're in one of those modes at the moment because um, not to, uh, you know, talk down about the previous Power BI test, but that test, uh, in my opinion, was not a good metric on whether someone was um, certifiably an expert in Power BI. But this one definitely approaches uh, that level more so. Yeah. And I, and I just remember, too, from, from the, that first test was that was when Power BI had like eight buttons you could click. Exactly. <laughs> like it wasn't much going on with the They're product. definitely delving deeper into the iceberg of Power BI with this test. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, so it sounds like study, know your stuff, right? You're not just going to be able to come in and kill it. And uh, if you can go out and try to find some brain dumps some other things, just be prepared because there's some, there's some things out there that are going to kind of try to trick you up. Mm-hmm. And apparently okay. focus on uh, power query and data modeling, not as, uh, not as heavy on the DAX. That's interesting. Yes, that was a, a large thing that I took away from it was that, you know, if you're, if you're uh, someone who's very confident with DAX, you could probably uh, just deal with the test that way as long as you know every variation of the common functions. Do they ask you to like code in it or is it just multiple choice? You know, it's funny... I always imagine that I'm going to walk in and have to freehand write some DAX questions, but real, mm -hmm. really what it is is fill in the blank with a, a bank of uh, functions. So you have the skeleton of a DAX measure and you just got to put the functions in the right place. So there's a lot of deductive reasoning that you can kind of uh, rely on because, you know, if you know only one of these functions has three parameters and you see three parameters there, then you know what the root function is going to be. So that makes sense. And I also I heard rumor of case studies in this in, in this exam. So I know we've uh, well, you're the second person on our team to pass it. Um, any 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 advice for people that are you know take this test and don't expect to see a case study? Yeah, you know, maybe talk about the structure of the case study, what it's like. So the case studies are very interesting. Um, uh, our team, you know, we both took the the test. We both went through the case studies. We discussed our answer or you know the questions we were given. Uh, between the two of us. And uh, there's quite a breadth of questions that you can receive in the case studies that are very similar. So the case studies start out by just explaining a business um, at a very high level, and then give you three or four requirement pages where you look at their data model, you look at uh, their data types, almost like a data dictionary. And then they offer some business analysis where 
you know, different departments require some require uh, require some specific things for visuals and the way the data needs to be structured. And then finally, they present you with the questions where you have to take each one of those considerations and provide them with the best answer. And although our colleague um, was able to uh, get through it with a little bit of uh, friction, my questions I found were way easier uh, on a whole to uh, his answers, uh, that he ans the answers he had to come up with. Um, some of the things was setting up a relationship for a, func for a measure that would use inactive relationships. And you know, the answer was pretty um, solid due to the fact that it was a data type question, but um, a comparable question that our colleague got was much more in depth about how you would create a measure that uses specific functions. So realistically, um, I, the, the warning I'd give to people is the way you are trying to be tricked in the earlier parts of the test, you can kind of take a step back from that. And it's a little bit more concrete. They're relying on your expertise for these specific questions. Um, most likely what you believe to be the answer will be the answer because a lot of the answers have 75% of a correct answer. And then they just throw something kind of silly into the option. So read the entire answer, make sure that nothing in there is just kind of out of place because if it doesn't feel right, chances are it's not right. 